So tonight we're going to talk about typesetting. In our first video, we talked a little bit about typographic history and the anatomy of type. Now we're going to talk about how to work with type when we are setting large bodies of copy. And the first thing we want to look at is alignment. And we have four different alignments here on screen. We have flush left and rag right. Now this is going to be the alignment that uh, as a young designer or as, as, a, as a beginning designer, uh, I would suggest that you learn how to set this type, learn how to adjust the tracking and the kerning and break lines and, and clean up that rag on the right. This is where I would suggest everybody start. Next we have centered. You're not going to want to center body copy because it makes it relatively hard to read. Flush right, rag left. Now while this is tempting for some to use, this is not generally a good method of setting type for the reader because it makes it harder to read. And next we have Justified, and Justified is a go-to alignment for designers who are just beginning. You have these nice clean lines on both the left and the right, nice straight lines. But there are inherent problems in Justified text that take a little bit more precision to properly set. So what happens with Justified text is with the more text that you have, there are these giant spaces in, bet in between words because it's trying to figure out how many characters you can fit on each line. So to set justified text correctly, you have to go in and you have to kern each word to actually close those spaces because they are interruptions for the eye. So generally what I ask my students to do is stay away from justified text and learn how to set flush left text. Once you learn how to set flush left text, at that point can we go in and can we start learning how to set justified text. You want to be proficient in typesetting, start with flush left text and utilize that uh, in your designs. So now let's talk about leading, which is a, another important. We talked about alignment, let's move on to leading. So leading is the vertical measure from the baseline of one line to the baseline of the line below it in a paragraph. Ascenders and descenders should never intersect as they diminish the character recognition and create dark spots that stop the eye. So simply put, leading is the space between our lines. And on this slide, we have four different variations of 14 point type set with different letting amounts. So we see these fractions at the bottom of the column. So 14 over 21, all the way to 14 over 30. That's kind of a shorthand for designers to say, I want my type set in 14 over 27. So I'm telling you that I would like my type set in 14 point size with 27 letting. So it's just a little, it's a shorthand way of quickly indicating how I would like the, the typeset. But as you can see, the increase in letting may, can make the, the text more legible. If I was setting 14 point type, I'd probably set it around 14 over 21 or 14 over 24, depending on the context of the type, whether it's body copy or whether it was an introduction. But this slide is just to show you the variation of letting and, and how it affects the legibility and readability of text. As we move into typesetting and working with large bodies of text, we're going to run into problems. And one of the problems that we need to look out for are what are called widows. And these are single words on a, the last line of a paragraph. And we want to try to solve these. We want to try to get rid of them. And we can do it in a number of ways. The correct version down at the bottom, the, the paragraph on the bottom, has adjusted the tracking to bump some words up to give a little bit more room on the third line for the word layouts and just bump that up. The next thing that we have to ha have knowledge of is punctuation and the correct use of punctuation. And the punctuation that is on your screen are the most commonly misused punctuation that we, we as designers really have to look out for. So you have quotation marks or curly quotes, and this is to offset text, like as if you're quoting somebody. So like funny, he said. Then we have prime marks, and prime marks are to distinguish measurement. So I am five foot six inches tall. Next we have a hyphen, which is for compound words. So a man-eating shark, numbers 21, 22, 24, all that's going to be hyphenated. So compound words takes a hyphen, and that's the hyphen key on your keyboard right next to the plus key. Next we have an in dash, and this is for periods of time. So open from 1 to 2 p.m., Monday through Friday, June through July. Uh, this is created by holding down option and the hyphen key. 
or alt on a PC and the hyphen key. Next, we have an M dash, and this is used for longer pauses than what a what a comma can can give you. Oftentimes in writing, it is used to insert a thought that relates to the main part of the sentence but is slightly different. You want to stop the reader and give the reader some more information that they can ponder and then continue on with the thought from there there on out. So then shyly they kissed. You get an M dash by holding down shift option hyphen on a Mac, shift alt hyphen on a PC. And then finally we have an ellipses and the ellipses is not just three periods. You don't just type in three periods. It's actually a separate character within a type family. And you get that special character by holding down option semicolon or alt semicolon on a PC. So it's very important to remember these things because our, our clients may not necessarily know these. A lot of times for M dashes, I see two hyphens in a row and we need to know at that point that that's what they're wanting to put in. They, they want M dash. Sometimes you'll see an N dash with two spaces next to it, but used in the style of an M dash. And therefore we need to know to go in there and switch that to the correct dash. When it comes to prime marks and quotation marks, so when I first started designing, the problem was that you would use, people would use prime marks instead of quotation marks. The problem that has arisen now is that software has gotten smarter and so said, okay, if people are going to be hitting the inch mark on the keyboard every time they mean quotation marks, why don't we just automatically switch that over to a quotation mark? The problem here is that if I'm writing out measurements and I want to put in five foot six inches, most software will automatically change that to five apostrophe six close quote. And that is a problem because it, they're not the proper mark. So you have to make sure now to go back in and when you are intending to use prime marks, that those are actually prime marks and the software is not changing them to quotation or apostrophes. I think it's the one thing that as you become more in tune with design, you'll start noticing these mistakes. And it shows a bit of laziness on the designer's part not to, to go in and make sure that, that the punctuation is correct. So it's important to master this punctuation so that you don't see your design one day or other people don't see, their, see your design one day and think, ooh, that's a mistake. So always double check your punctuation. So let's go over the rules of type. So number one, insert only a single space after all punctuation. The use of two spaces dates back to when we were taught how to use a typewriter. Two spaces interrupt the flow of the eye, leading to an unnecessary pause. Using one space helps the viewer easily read the content on the page. Two, always spell check. Once the design is complete, spell check all of the text. This is done two ways and both must be used. First, in most software programs, there is a spell check available. Use it. Second, print the document and have another person read through the text. Even if the text is given to you by a client, spell check it. Never assume that it is correct. Number three, and we, we just finished talking about this, use proper quote and apostrophe marks. Use true quotation marks and apostrophes instead of using inch marks and feet marks. Determine who your audience is before deciding where to put your punctuation as it differs across the globe. Most software today have their preferences set to a default to what are called smart quotes. Therefore, we must be diligent to replace proper quotation marks with inch and foot marks when needed. To access these letter forms, open the glyphs palette. Four, increase letting to improve readability. Letting refers to the space between lines of text. It is important for the purpose of readability and appearance. Letting is measured from baseline to baseline. Five, altering fonts. Don't alter the widths, weight, or shapes of the characters. Type design is an art. Each character has been carefully designed, taking into consideration the width, weight, and the shape of each character, stress, stroke, and serif. Graphic software allows us to destroy and alter the original design. Inexperienced designers use this option to force type to fit. Instead, select typefaces with large families if you need the flexibility in width and weight. Six. Justification of text. Although fully justified text may look clean and refined, 
It is extremely difficult to perfect and therefore is not suggested for use with body copy. Left aligned text is easier to read and easier to set. Justified text is more difficult to set without the inevitable word spacing problems. Right aligned and centered text are generally not used for body copy due to hampered legibility. Seven, hierarchy. Decide what to emphasize. Which elements will receive the most emphasis? Which one or two messages do you want to get attention? Play up these elements. Everything else is secondary to those pieces of information. Use white space to bring the elements closer together or, or to isolate the elements and draw attention to them. Eight, use proper dashes and hyphens. An M dash is a type of punctuation used to offset clauses in a sen sentence or to indicate an abrupt change in thought. M dashes can also be used to denote a quote. N dashes are used to denote any type of duration. Hyphens are used to form compound words such as 21 out of bounds. Hyphenation of longer words also occurs in body copy. However, a minimum of three characters before and after the hyphen is required. And this, on this rule, I always tell young designers to check with their art director uh, because this rule is a stylistic rule. Some art directors will have different uh, minimums that they want to see you use. Some clients might not want you to use hyphenation. I try to challenge my students to not use hyphenation at all because it makes things a little bit more difficult to, to typeset. But if you perfect being able to typeset without hyphenation, when you do have the opportunity to use hyphenation, it makes things a lot easier. Nine, the ellipses character. Use the ellipses character and not the three periods. You can create the ellipses character by using the keyboard shortcut on a Mac, which is option semicolon, or on a PC, alt semicolon. 10. Avoid widows and orphans. Widows are either single words alone on a line or single sentences alone on a new page. Orphans are single lines of copy alone at the end of a page or at top of a column. Number 11. Keep edges of paragraphs clean. It is important that the eye is not visually distracted and fatigued when reading large amounts of body copy. Make sure that the rag or ragged edge, in this paragraph's case, the right side is ragged, does not have extreme differences in width. Manual adjustments may be needed to clean up ragged paragraph edges. Try not to have any more than two hyphens in a row. Manual adjustments and settings in the program can be made to aid in keeping everything in order, such as using a soft return, which is shift plus return to move the word to the next line. Next, let's talk about typographic space. The interdependency of type and space is relative. The presence of the same typographic element can become completely different depending on how it relates to the format. Conversely, the same space can be dramatically altered by changing the size and position of the type within it. A passive composition of type centered within a format is activated by shifting the line off center either vertically or horizontally. Each change in the type's position alters the spaces that are created in relation to one another. So we can have type set smack dab in the center, both horizontally and vertically. We can shift it over to the left and it begins to activate that area. The gray in the background could be clear space, it could be white, it could be a color, it could be a photograph. But by shifting the type over to the left and keeping it centered, it automatically activates more of the space on the right. By taking that same type and shifting it down into the lower third of the page and off to the left, we really have activated that space on the top. And we can now start to utilize that active space in our design to bring the eye either down to the type or to allow our eye to go from the type up to whatever is in that space. Spatial relationships based on the messages within the text are the basis for this poster's austere and simple yet complex composition. The alignments and proportional areas they define are further enhanced by changing the spatial unit's colors to create optical depth. 
Creating clear and effective hierarchy is one of the designer's most important tasks as it helps the viewer understand the information being presented. Determining hierarchy is the result of reading the text and asking some simple questions. What are the parts of the information to be designed? What ought to be the main focus of the reader's attention? Does the viewer need to see a certain grouping of words before focusing on the main part? How do the parts that are not the main focus relate to the part that is? And if you watch my composition, format, and hierarchy video that will be linked at the end of this pre presentation, we go into a little bit more about hierarchy and how to identify and clarify the content that you're working with. There are a number of ways a designer can differentiate the separate text components within the design. The one is with spatial orga organization. Grouping related items together or aligning them along an axis establishes a sense of regularity to them. You can also do this with scale, so larger elements appear to advance in space, calling attention to them. In effect, the optically perceived depth of elements helps to clarify their importance in relation to one another. Their apparent nearness or distance signifies their position in the hierarchy. So that's the end of the, this typesetting presentation. I hope that you got something from this. And again, thank you for your time. And until the next video, have a wonderful day.